By default, all the references when you build a formula are relative, which means they're related to the location of the original data. So if your formula moves, the references will move in the formula. An absolute reference locks a reference into place in your formula so it doesn't shift. You'll easily be able to identify an absolute reference in the formula bar by the dollar sign. So that dollar sign has nothing to do with money, but it was a character that would never be used in a mathematical operation uh, that Excel had on every keyboard. So that's why they chose the dollar sign. The F4 key is the quick way to change a relative reference to an absolute reference, and I'll demonstrate that for you. And it's easy to spot an absolute reference by those dollar signs because my relatives have no money. Do yours? Another thing just to point out that all Excel formulas do follow the standard order of precedence in calculation. So if you don't remember that uh, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction is the order that calculations happen, you may want to brush up on that basic math um, because those parentheses will come in handy later on. Okay, so let me show you what I mean. Remember, this worksheet is available for you to download and you can work right along with me. So we're going to go to the starting data and here we are with our basic function that we did in the last session. Um, only this time we're interested in forecasting growth percentage for next year. So what I'm going to do is so that I avoid any confusion, I'm simply going to hide the last year column. So I selected it, right click and hide. And I'm on a Windows PC. You can do all of these functions also on a Mac. Uh, it's just the layout's a little different. So for next year, okay, we're going to take a look at the growth percentage and we're going to um, extrapolate and guess how many more patients we're going to bring in. So let's say that our growth percent is 10%. All right. So if I put the number 10 in that box and I do my calculation, you would say, okay, so you do 120 times 10, that would be 12, and then you have to add that into the original amount, so then that's 132. So it's really easy to work out. You could even do it on scratch paper, but now we have to tell Excel how to do this. And the first thing I can tell you is that this is a whole number, but remember what a percent is. A percent is a piece of that pie. So it's all part of one. So we're going to go to the home ribbon in the number group and click percent. And you'll see, oh my goodness, if I use the number 10, the whole number 10, it's really going to be 1000%. And all of my employees will quit because we make them work too hard. So now that I have formatted this cell as percentage, you can see it's now format as percentage. I can think as I normally would. We're going to increase by 10%. So if I were to turn this back now to just general number, you see that's 0 0.10, which is what we knew that 10% was if we really thought about it. So we'll put it back to the 10%. So then we say, all right, so next year, I'm going to click in D4. That's where I want my value to show. And all formulas begin with the equal sign. Because we're not using the auto sum or a built-in function, we have to put the equal sign there. So equal, and we click on the 120, and then we multiply, which is the star on our number pad, times the 10%. Okay, so that makes sense. I'm sure you're with me. If I hit enter to complete that formula, you'll see 12, 12. Okay, 12 is good, but 12 is the increase. It's not the total I'm expecting Dr. Smith to see. So if I come back to my formula, I can now edit it. And I could have done this as I went along, but I think as you're learning, it's nice to see this step by step. Up here is the formula bar. So remember that order of precedence. So what we're going to do is put a little parenthesis here. Okay, so this is the 120 times 10%, and then we have to add back in the original value, the 120 again. And we hit enter. 
132. Okay, that looks right. Great. So now I'm going to copy this down and life will be great, right? Wait. Life's not great. Well, life is still great, but my formula is not right because these didn't increase. Why didn't they increase? Well, let's double click on one of these formulas to trace the problem. And we say, okay, 80 times, oh, it's not doing the 10%, it's doing the one below it. That's because it's a relative reference. So I need to make this reference to this cell, H1, absolute. So let's get rid of these broken formulas that we don't like. And we'll come back to the one that was working. Now, I don't want to adjust every single formula that I copy down. That would take forever. I could put 10% right in the formula, but you're going to see in a moment how having it out here where your manager can see it and play around um, really makes it easier for you in the long run. So if I come up to H1, that's the, the reference I want to be absolute. I just did a click and swipe, okay? Just like I was going to make it bold or anything else. H1, and then I'm going to click the F4 key on my keyboard. It's above the number four on your keyboard if you have a standard keyboard. And now you see dollar signs in there. If you don't remember F4, but you remember the dollar signs, you can just click in there and type a dollar sign, which is, oh, shift and the number four. So either way is fine. I don't want it to shift by column or row. I want it to always stay in H1. And I'll hit enter. So now if I copy this down, all right, you'll see the increases based on that 10%. Now, I'm not crazy about this 112.2. I think we're dealing with people, and I'd like to see whole people. So I'm going to select these values, and I am just going to um, decrease the decimal place to round to whole numbers. Very simple to do. Now, if we come down here, we can copy over our formulas from earlier. And you can see, oh, I don't have those whole people again. So I'll decrease the decimal. And it takes care of the rounding as it should. Something to know about when you're doing that um, decrease and increase decimal is that you're not cutting it off. Excel is really using the original value for calculations. So you may find a slight difference of, of a one place value when you're done your rounding uh, when you do calculations. But that's really great that Excel does keep the proper value. It just makes it easier to see. So why is this 10% out here helpful? Well, watch this. Let's say your manager says, well, I want to kind of extrapolate and see. Um, let's see if it's 8.5%. Okay, so now that rounded it up to 9 up here, but if I increase the decimal, you'll see it's really calculating by 8.5%. So you want to watch that and make sure that you have the decimal places the way you want. So this is what the values would be if it was 8.5%. Here's the value if it was 21%. And all your manager has to do is change one little value and everything is reflected so doesn't that make your life easier? Okay, so that is the basics of absolute and relative.